In this video, we're going to take a look at graphing linear equations using slope and y-intercept. There's a special form called slope-intercept form that we see here, y equals mx plus b, that allows us to quickly and easily graph linear equations. Let's take a look at this first one. The, uh, we look, and if we can pick out the m and the b, in other words, the slope and the y-intercept, we can then use those in order to graph our equation. So the first one, let's uh, look at here, the m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. With those two things we can graph these linear equations. So as we look at this one, the slope is the coefficient of the x term. In this case it's negative 2. So m equals negative 2. Secondly, we're looking for that y-intercept, which is the b. The b in this case is 4. So we have our m and our b. Once we have those, we can use them then to graph our equation. We start at the b, which is the y-intercept. The y-intercept is the place where our line crosses the y-axis. Remember, the y-axis is the vertical axis. And in this case, this one crosses at 4. So we make our first point at 4 on the y-axis. Right there. Okay, then we use our slope to get additional points. Now remember, the general form of slope is rise over run. So we can use that fact, if we can write the slope as a fraction, we can use the rise and the run to give us additional points. So negative 2 as a fraction would be negative 2 over 1. Now, if we want to rise negative 2, that means we would go down 2. If we want to run, uh, let's just back up for a second, rising is positive, positive is up, and then negative would be down. When we're running, the positive direction is to the right, and negative is to the left. So, again, we're going to rise in this case, negative 2, which means we go down 2, and then we're going to run 1 in the positive direction. So that puts us right over here. So there's our second point. Now, we can make another point by doing the same thing. Going right from this last point that we found, we can go again down 2, that rise of negative 2, and a run of 1, that puts us here. We can do it again if we'd like, over here. Down 2 over 1, and again, down 2 over 1, to get as many points as we'd like. Now I can also think of this fraction as 2 over negative 1 because I can put the negative on either the top number or the bottom number, the numerator or the denominator. If I choose to write it this way, then I go back to my y-intercept, and I rise 2, so I'd go up 2, and then I'm going to run negative 1, which takes me 1 to the left, which leaves me right here. Okay, so now I have those points, and I can go ahead and draw my line. So I go ahead and, and draw the line through those points, and that is the graph of y equals negative 2x plus 4. Let's take a look at the next one. Again, we need to pick out our y, our, excuse me, our y-intercept and our slope. So the slope is the coefficient of the x, the number that's with the x. This, we don't have a number. But remember that there's always a 1. Oops, let me switch tools here. There's always a 1 on the variable as the coefficient if there's nothing written there. So in this case, the slope is 1, and the y-intercept, our b, is negative 3. We need to bring that negative with because, remember over here, the general form is plus, so this would be that negative then. So b equals negative 3. Now I can use those two things to graph my line. So I go ahead and we come over here and we're gonna start our y-intercept is negative 3. So that means I go on the y-axis 
and I go down to negative 3. And so my first point is going to be, oops, a little messy there. My first point is going to be right here at negative 3. Then I use my slope. Remember, write it as a fraction so we can do the rise over run. So 1 as a fraction would just be 1 over 1. So that means I go to my y-intercept, and then I'm going to rise 1, and then I'm going to run 1. So rise 1, run 1, that gets me to right here. Again, rise 1, run 1, that puts me right there. Rise 1, run 1, and again. Okay, now if I wanted to go the other direction and get some points, what is an equivalent fraction of 1 over 1? If I want to go down 1, because that's what we're going to need to do, um, so that would be negative, to go down is negative, so negative 1, and then I want to go to the left, that would be another negative 1. So negative 1 over negative 1, that is indeed the same as 1 over 1. It's just not simplified. We wrote it kind of um, in a special way so that we can see, oh, I can go down 1 and over 1. Sure enough, okay, and that's going to line up with the other points I have, down 1, over 1, and so on. I've got a bunch of points there, so I can go ahead and draw my line through those points to show my graph. So there is the graph of the line y equals x minus 3. Now let's look at this last one. Sometimes the equations not going to be given to us in slope intercept form. Slope intercept form, to be in slope intercept form, it needs to be solved for y. This one is not. So let's go ahead and solve this equation for y. Okay, to do that, we're going to subtract 2x because we want to get that y by itself. Okay, then we bring down what we've got left, which is 6y equals, I'm going to write the x term first because that's the general form. So negative 2x minus 10. Oops. Minus 10. All right, then I need to get the y by itself. So I'm going to divide by 6 on both sides. And when I do that, I'm going to divide each piece by 6. Um, I could divide, when I divide the whole thing by 6, that's the same as dividing each piece by 6. So divide by 6, divide by 6. I simplify, and I'm left with y equals negative 2 divided by 6 would be negative 1 third x and then minus 10 over 6 that would simplify to divide each by 2 would be 5 over 3 okay now we're in slope intercept form so I can go ahead and pick out what the slope and the y-intercept are and graph in this case the slope is already a fraction it's negative 1 third so we have our m equals negative one-third. And our y-intercept is sitting right here for us, negative five over three. Okay, so now I go ahead and graph. Start at the b. A way to remember whether you start at the slope or the y-intercept is that it's in alphabetical order. We start at the b, we use that first, then we use the m. So let's use our b negative five-thirds. Negative five-thirds is just a third under two, so that would just drop us back a little bit right here. So there's our first point. Then we use our slope from there. Remember it's rise over run, and we're gonna rise negative one, so that means we go down one, and then we're gonna run three, so we go over three, which puts us right about there. Then we can do the same thing rise negative 1 which means we go down 1 and then we're gonna run 3 so that puts us right about there okay and we can do the same thing that we've done in the other problems rewrite it use putting the negative on the bottom and that'll take us in the opposite direction so we go back to our y-intercept we rise 1 so then we go up 1 and then we run negative 3 so it's 3 to the left that puts us right here Again, we can rise 1 and run 3, which puts us right over here. Okay, so we've got our points. Grab your line tool and draw the line. There we are. Okay, so there's the graph of 
2x plus 6y equals negative 10, or this equation right here in slope-intercept form. So again, graphing linear equations using slope and y-intercept sure beats graphing using ordered pairs because if we can pick out the y-intercept, which is our b, and our slope, the coefficient of the x term, we can then use those starting at the y-intercept and then using the slope to get points as many as we want and draw our line. Hope that was helpful. Good luck.